smidge. That's better. Let's chop it. I know I know I just take care of my due diligence. Maybe less impressive this one. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are on our first agenda agenda this evening. This is the public hearing for the fiscal year 2021-2022 amended budget. Um, and roll call, please. Abel? Here. England? Here. Valesco? Here. Bloom? Here. Payne? Here. Borowski? Here. No, the amended budget, you saw that uh, in May. Uh, nothing has changed off the amended budget. And, uh, and uh, unless anybody in the public has any questions, you can adjourn the hearing. And then uh, we will uh, uh, approve the amended budget into a regular meeting. Second, anyone here for public input? We're going to adjourn from this meeting. Um, uh, motion to adjourn at 6.01 p.m. So and a second, please. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. We are on to our next agenda, which is a public hearing. Uh, the purpose of the hearing will be to receive public comments on the proposal to sell bonds of the district in the amount of $5,500,000 for the purpose of con conforming its existing facilities to help students through the building code moved daily at the State Board of Education of the State of Illinois by altering and reconstructing said facilities and having equip equipment purchased and installed therein. Um, may I have roll call, please? Abel? Here. England? Here. Valesco? Here. Bloom? Here. Hey, here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the um, the purpose for the hearing is, and I have uh, Kendall King here this evening, who has been our bond uh, bond representative from uh, the previous issuance of bonds that we had this evening. And part of this is is that <clears throat> when we originally did our health life safety bonds. Um, construction costs were much less than what they are now. And uh, on the Madison Park project, it is needed uh, to uh, have some additional funding to uh, finish that project off so that uh, we'll be able to complete that. It will not raise taxes. We are going to extend our debt, which is permissible. The first round that we sold, we had a really good market at that point in time. Therefore, we had a relatively short payback on that. Uh, what we're going to be doing is extending the debt tonight. And we'll talk about that in terms of that so that everything fits within the existing levy that we have. It still leaves room for the district to be able to issue, to include the working cash that's due this year that's up. Plus, it will open up the working cash, cash capacity in 26-27. I've asked them to carve that out so that the district always has that opening uh, to be able to do that. And he will, um, and part of the ask tonight too is working with uh, Fector and FGM for the increased costs uh, would, would, would be able to make budget on, on the Madison Park project, which you're going to see the design and, and scope tonight of that project. 
and um, we're using Health Life Safety Bonds to do that because tonight you will see some renovation and then you're going to see new construction. So um, in order to complete the project, this is what, what we're going to need to do. Um, it's just extending the debt. I've asked him to come tonight uh, to give a, um, a synopsis of how this looks and then uh, the hearing tonight will, will officially start the process. So Dr. Kirshner I'll sum it up really well. Essentially, you're looking at uh, adding some new money debt uh, to your existing schedule, uh, looking at wrapping around your existing debt and putting that new money out on the end of the structure rather than layering most of it on top um, so as to basically minimize the impact of, uh, on taxes. This first page here is your debt limit page. Uh, your overall debt limit on the far right is $24 million, less the approximately $10 million you have outstanding gives you $14 million of debt, overall debt capacity. Um, the 1% county school facility sales tax you've been receiving has been coming in around 800000 As of last year, it's going to be actually back up again this year, I believe we talked about. Uh, that's relevant because you're using that 1% sales tax money to pay down some of your bonds um, in the form of the alternate revenue bonds that we did about a year and a half ago. At the bottom, there's a separate calculation for working cash bonds. Um, you have plenty of capacity there as well in terms of you can go up to $10 million of overall working cash maximum fund balance. Um, so your current bond issue size could go up to $7.5 second page shows existing <coughs> bonds. Um, so right now, this is just the two bonds that are on the levy. That would be your Series 2020B and your Series 2021. Uh, the Series 2021 was done for health life safety needs as well. Um, that one goes out through 2038. Um, the Series 2020B is the working cash bonds. That's the sort of rolling fund that you've been doing once every three or four years to keep, keep renewing that. Uh, that one will be paying off December of 23. Um, so part of this issuance here was just to keep rolling that working cash issue forward another three years, and then also add some capital money. As far as the structure goes, the working cash, we're gonna go ahead and put that in these first three years, and the health by safety, we're gonna put that out on the end of the schedule and pay that off at the end of the schedule. This last page here really lays it out and shows that in graphical form. Um, so if you look at the graph at the bottom, you can kind of see let the year 2021, that was the levy that you just did this last December. That's where that was at. Uh, let the year 2022, all that will be added to that will be the interest portion of the Series 22A, which will be the working cash. And then let the year 2023, that's when you'll start paying interest on the new uh, bond issue. But principal on that issue will not start until the end of the schedule, which pays off 38 through, through 41, essentially. So the last four years of the schedule is where we're layering all the principal in interest will be paid throughout the whole life of the schedule. If you look at the graph, you can see in year 2026, there's a drop off. That's the additional capacity we're leaving right there to come back and do new money working cash. So basically every three years, you would keep coming back and doing that if the district continues to um, you know, have needs for that working cash, keep that rolling forward. Any questions on any of this for me? Do we know what's the rate on the new issue? Uh, it is, it's, it's not been decided. Okay. Uh, let me say this, I'm glad we did the 20 million when we did, because rates were really, really low <laughs> a year and a half ago. They're going to be higher now. Sure. Um, but uh, basically, we're, we're looking basically right back to where we were pre-COVID, right? So in years about 2018, 2019, uh, we're about the same as far as interest rates where we are now. So that whole where it kind of dropped down, you saw low twos to two and a half was kind of COVID years. Now we're back up to right around 4% for 20 year money. Um, anywhere from basically 3.75 to 4.5 is where we're estimating it. <laughs> but that is changing every single day. Even just uh, last week, last Monday, we got hit by, <laughs> communities went up about a quarter percent in one day. So I am definitely looking forward to getting this locked in the price, hopefully here within the next week. And obviously we're gonna go through our same normal process of selling we always do. We'll contact all your local banks first, see if they'll be willing to purchase as much or all of it if possible. Certainly the, working cash side, the shorter end, the first three years, I expect we'll be able to get all that done quite easily with the local banks. The longer term stuff out in the last four years, that'll be a tougher sell, but if we can get it all sold to local banks, we will. Um, if not, then we'll take take those last four years out to the public offering and sell it, uh, just like we did on the alternate revenue bond last time around. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
So there's no been no discussions yet with local banks as to there's not no we always we always get through the, the board process yep, first absolutely. make sure it's officially started before we start that that makes sense okay thank you any other questions for Jenny? thank you for being here um we'll do public input input for this um, meeting right now None. We will adjourn from this meeting. I need a motion to adjourn at 6:09 p.m. Please. So moved. England and a second, please. Kane. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those so opposed, say no. All right. We are on to the main agenda here. We are going to call to order and start with roll call, please. Abel. Here. England. Here. Valesco. Here. Bloom. Here. Kane. Here. Zorowski. Hired. All right, we're on to the public interest portion of the meeting. Seeing none, we will move on to the citizen agenda. And we have some very special LMS kids here with us this evening, I believe. Mr. Logan, would you like to come up? Yes. And <coughs> tell us about their team. Okay. All right, um, so these were, we're missing one of our state qualifiers um, that was not able to be here tonight. Um, just to kind of give a summary of the season, we had about between 70 and 80 kids that came out for track at the beginning of the year. A uh, really strong group of athletes just in general. Um, we get the sectionals. Sectionals changed from the last time I actually got to coach in sectionals because in 2019 you were allowed to have your top two in the race were allowed to qualify for state and then you could also qualify on time. Uh, since they expanded from class A to class AA, they cut that number down to where it was you either qualified on time, tighter distance, or you got first place. So to have the amount of kids that we had going to state this year was a feat just in itself. Um, the times and heights and distances for anybody that kind of follows track uh, for this age level is very, very challenging. Uh, the time, the times are tough. And, and that's what we talk about all the time. We're chasing times. You know, we don't necessarily worry about winning races because we may win a race, but if you're not improving on your times, um, you're not going to get where we want to end up. Uh, sectional wise, obviously these guys, uh, we started off the day uh, guys started off in field events and the girls were running. The girls did, the seventh grade girls team actually placed, uh, Ty North Mackin got won the sectional, uh, so they got first place. The eighth grade girls lost out the St. Louis Lincoln by half of a point uh, for winning the sectionals. Uh, seventh grade boys ended up placing fourth and I think the eighth grade boys ended up placing seventh, uh, which again, 15 teams, 14, 15 teams, that's a great sectional. Uh, just overall. Um, started off the day and, and I, from the guys standpoint we kind of talked and we knew we maybe would have a challenge getting some guys there um, and Nick just went ahead and started off the day by PRing by like 10 inches and qualifying for state. Uh, goes from a PR of four foot seven to jumping five five of sectionals getting first place which was um, impressive to say the very least and uh, I know I was talking with his parents and was texting with Cam Crow, our senior high jumper, who is, I, I didn't teach him how to high jump, Cam Crow taught him how to high jump, and Cam was just as excited for Nick as we were. Um, girls wise, uh, we did really well at sectionals. We had a ton of people place first. Uh, we had people run really close to state qualifying times. Uh, and, and again, we, as a group, did a great job. They were able to win the sectional, which is, uh, it's been, I think about 12 years since that happened. So that was a big feat. We get to state, um, and, I, and I'll follow up on Nick since uh, he was in the field event. He had, we had a long day that first day. We were there for uh, about 10 hours, I think is what it was, before he was able to end up jumping. Uh, he was not able to clear opening height. Uh, we talked about that. And, and again, as a sixth grader competing in seventh grade state, getting there his first year was a, was a huge feat for him. Um, the first day we had, Correct me if I'm wrong, we had the mile and the 400. Is that the two races, correct? It's been a little bit. Uh, in the mile, so we had uh, Darby Brosh, eighth grader who is not here, was able to place 
15th in the mile, ran a really good time, actually one of her best times of the year. Uh, the crazy part about it, she had only been running the mile for about three weeks prior to qualifying for state. Uh, she had just kind of transitioned over into it late in the season and was able to obviously do very, very well. Um, Amari Vickery placed second in the 400 meter dash. Uh, I think that was the race that, that, that we all kind of thought that that was the one. Like, that was the one we were like, and I know I've been talking about the, that, that's the one. Um, and she was right there with a girl uh, at the very end, ended up losing by less than a second, uh, ran a great race and, and came in second place. Uh, we get to day two, uh, we had our, no, we had, yeah, we had our relays. Um, so I'll go through the four by two relay, placed third in state. Uh, it was Leighton Warshall, or Leighton, Leighton's right there. Jada Carroll, Emma Widener, Amari Vickery, and then McKenna Harmon was our alternate. Uh, they ran a really good race. I ended up placing third, which was uh, really good. And you guys placed first at sectionals, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, seventh grade, four by four. I ended up placing seventh place. That's Layton Warshall, Alexis Middleton, Jada Carroll, Amari Vickery, and Emma Widener. Seventh place was a great finish. Uh, for anybody that happened to see the video from sectionals, it was one of the best races I've probably ever seen in my life. Um, they kind of got... There was a girl from East St. Louis in the second leg that was very, very talented and had built a big lead. Um, and we were able to track her, track them down and pass them in the last 100 meters uh, after being probably 250 meters down. So it was a, it was a cool race to watch. Um, in the 800 meters, we had Darby Brosh, the eighth grader, placed 13th, uh, did it, ran a good race. Again, uh, you get the state and it's, it's pretty challenging. Uh, so it was one of those where we weren't sure how she would be able to do, but she ended up running one of her best times of the year. And then we had the race that probably everybody is thinking about. We had Amari in the 800, um, a race that, you know, I talk to Coach Newkirk about it all the time. The 800 just kind of comes down to how bad you really want it. I mean, it's not quite the mile. It's not a distance race. It's not really a sprint. It's kind of that in-between race, and it really comes down to, how bad do you not want to lose? Um, and the one thing I know about Amari, she does not like to lose. Uh, and she was able to come back right on the second lap. Kind of got bottled up at the very beginning. I was able to come around, take the lead on the curve, and then able to hold the girl off at the end to win a state championship. First one since like 1982, I believe, uh, which is an awesome feat just in itself. Um, I think our kids represented the school very well while they were up there, uh, not just competitively, but supporting each other and being there for each other when we needed each other. Uh, we had a hot day on Friday and we had a cold day on Saturday, which summarized our spring just in general. Uh, we talked to them very early in the season when we were running in bad weather in practice that you never know what you're going to really get to see. We got to experience probably one of the best state tournaments that the IESA does. There were 2,000 athletes there. Um, I don't know how many people, it was the most, the biggest crowd I've seen at that venue in a long time. So uh, it was a cool experience for the kids and it was a great experience and they represented our school very, very well. well thank you, congratulations. Big smiles right here. Perfect. And we got a moms and dads with us. It's a good spot right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too.
that's your good side. You're set. I don't turn yeah. those things. I keep that. I do not comment. All right, we are on to the consent agenda. I have a proposed motion by the Board of Education to approve the consent agenda as follows. Approve the addition and deletion of high school activity accounts. Approve the minutes from the public hearing on May 17, 2022. Approve the regular and closed session minutes from May 17, 2022. Approve the monthly bills and approve the treasurer's report. We have a motion, please. England and a second? Second. Okay, Dr. You know, the bills are tracking for this time of the year as we get ready to <coughs> close. Uh, it's hard to believe June 30th will be here next week, and then we will close the books on fiscal year 22. Uh, the budget is tracking, as you saw this month. I indicated last month we had three payrolls. Last month, this month we only had one payroll. That block brought the budget back, back to where it needed to be, as you saw in your treasurer's report. Other than that, everything is tracking the way it's uh, supposed to track. Um, then we'll be getting the end of balances uh, in, in, in terms of uh, that situation as we come to the close of this fiscal year. But the bills are you know, pretty much this time of year. The bills were what they were because of the construction that's going to be some of the requests, the pay requests uh, on, on the construction project. And that will be recommended to approve the consent agenda. Right, thank you. Can I vote Abel? Aye. England? Aye. Velasco? Aye. Bloom? Aye. Kane? Aye. Tires? Aye. We're on the new business. I have a proposed motion by the Board of Education to approve the contract paying order of PCCO number 005, the check for construction for the Whitfield Street Elementary Project in the amount of $3,880.45. Name a motion, please. So moved. England? And a second, please. Why don't you come up and give your uh, report of where we are? I did send out the weekly report. Okay. If you also will look on your weekly report as well that I send to you each week, there is where the contingencies fall for the total contingency project as well as the construction allowance in there. You'll see that, that that's in in the packet on a weekly update every every week that comes out. Um, the monthly report, he'll give you a schedule where, where things are at, and he'll discuss the change order today. Um, um, in, in terms of that situation, there's been a lot of work done on the site as you drive by. The building is, we've got a building, and uh, that's a good thing. Um, and uh, they continue to make progress uh, on, on that, so I'll turn it over to Pete. Okay, um, so we'll get into the, the change order right away since it was fresh. So. Um, what that change order is for is for changing, changing some grades on the west side of the site, basically um, parallel with the road. The reason why we had to get into this is um, there's a high pressure gas main that runs along the road. It was believed to be right underneath the back of curb or somewhere in that location. Um, when we got Julie come out market, we did some extra potholing and we actually uncovered that the gas main was approximately four feet to five feet further into the site than what we thought. Um, so what the plane shown and what what Aaron led us to believe. So when we got into the grading, <coughs> um, the grade actually slopes down towards the building. So <coughs> the existing grade had to be cut out approximately one to two feet, and depending on where you're at. So some locations we were getting, we were going to be within six inches of that high pressure gas main. Some places we would be within you know two feet. And what they want is, uh, I believe, if off the top of my head, was 36 inches of cover. So. With that being said, we had to change the grading plans. Um, the other option would be have Amron relocate or lower the gas main. The numbers that they threw out to us were upwards of $25,000, $30,000 to relocate that section of the gas main. So we thought, with us and the design team, thought this would be the best solution for the project would be to raise the, raise the grading um, so we have a minimum coverage and then we don't have to worry about moving the gas main. So yeah, that gas line, I, I know exactly where that gas line is, is if you go it'd be on the back side of the building where it faces high as, you know, on that side, but it's down to the uh, south a little bit. But when I walked over there, I was kind of, uh, you know, this thing was marked, or, you know, caught to be where it was. They unburied it, I mean, it was like that. 
you could actually, you know, it's a wonder we didn't hit the line. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of a wonder that Jelly didn't hit the line. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, but it all worked out good. But somehow, and I remember that because that line, I said, what's that? And it, it actually, yeah. Eric said it's the gas line. So I, I understand the need for, for that after looking at that gas line. It also affect the drainage for the site, any? So the civil engineer, um, they, they produced the drawing revision. They regraded the site. Uh, so the grade is a little bit higher in some locations right along behind the curb, but the grades along the building have not changed. So we shouldn't have any issues, any concerns about drainage or stormwater systems on the site. So he looked at everything in rain recalculation. So when they do that type of looking work, do they not, are they under any kind of obligation to, or, or what's the guarantee that they're looking at? So basically, when you call Julie, Julie says that it should be within about 18 inches of where it's at. It's not guaranteed, it's not all the time. Um, so that, that's basically what the kind of leeway they give you is within 18 okay. inches. Okay, is this you, within the 18 inches? It, it, I would have to ver verify with Eric, but I believe it was outside the 18 inches. It was outside the 18 inches. I mean, because I looked at it, and, and when I went over there, I'm like, holy smokes. You know, that thing couldn't have been that much below the ground when, when you looked at that mm -hmm. in, some, in some areas of that, of that gas line. Pushing dirt, little dirt, instead of moving that line is yeah. way too Yeah, yeah. yeah I can yeah, and we didn't even want to entertain it with the one and said it would be about twenty-five or thirty thousand. We said, well, let's just hold tight and get with the design team before we do it. So, because it was just found now, would it, would it, what would the impact have been had we known it in the design? Would that, would that money probably just been? Um, that's a. So, yeah, I guess if it was uncovered during the design phase of it, if we actually, if they brought equipment out to soft dig and pothole some of those utilities to verify. Um, we could have brought up that, hey, there's this gas main through here, we can have one or two options, we can raise grading, um, or we can work with Hamer to get the line relocated. So it could have went either way from the beginning. Um, we would have had a definite answer going into construction, knowing what, what it was going to take place. But without physically potholing those utilities ahead of time, um, it's kind of, I mean, you can spend a bunch, bunch of money up front and it'd be exactly where they say it is and not be an issue, um, or you can, take for granted that it's going to be within the Julie locate and you know worry about the cost later on. Thank you. Does some of this process also include their, the civil design a little bit or not? Um, so this is direct construction costs uh, related to the change. I would have to defer that to the design team. Um, I do not know if they end up charging. I don't, I don't think they do. <coughs> That's not usually something like that. They, it's just a less a little significant, so I don't think that they would have. I haven't heard anything that would have to come to us. The okay. architect, and I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> Not on change order. I got one. Here, just overall, I had a couple calls uh, come into me this last uh, couple weeks, just looking on the outside of the precast wall. And I, I drove by just to kind of verify it on the north side of the wall, precast on north, I guess northwest corner there. It looks like there's like some welts on the outside of that. What, what do you? So that we did, we noticed the same thing. We've been working with the the manufacturer on what these, you know, if, I would say defects, if you will, what they are, and what we can do to mitigate it. And it looks like it's held in. It, it does. I know it's not held in, but look, yeah, that's so what it looks. People are like, man, I look shot against there. No, I we 100 agree. So we're working on a fix currently with the manufacturer. Um, so a couple different options would be to apply. A stained color to it to hopefully limit what the impact of visual would look like. So structurally, it has no impact on the building at all. Um, another option would be we can skim the surface and basically flatten out the surface so you don't see those dimples in the precast in the concrete. Um, another option would be is to heavy blast um, when they go to prep it before they seal it and try to uh, feather out the dimple, if you will, so it doesn't pop out as much. So. We've noticed that it's pretty much when it's in direct sunlight, you see it because it casts a little bit of a shadow that sticks out. In the shade, you don't see anything. Um, so that was the hard part, trying to determine what it was at the plant because the, the panels are set on their side or laying flat, so they don't get the actual visual of the panel being split straight up. So 
it wasn't noticed until the panels were at the, at the site, all of them were coming. So we are currently working out um, the fix for it. We're gonna propose it to the design team, figure out, get everybody involved in it. Um, so they did test one spot out today, actually. They tested a, a, a spot where they skimmed it and we're gonna have the design team come look at it. So, so is that gonna cost us more money? No, it that? will not cost the school anything. It is completely on the contractor to resolve. Don't so, look good right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I drove by it pretty much and I'm like, man, dude, that thing got pelted with something. I mean, so what they believe created the dimple in the, in the concrete finish is they use what's called a form liner. Um, basically, in layman's terms, the plastic, piece of plastic that lays on the ground and it has those grooves in there every on every six inches or eight inches. Um, they'll pour the concrete on top of there. So what they believe happened is when they lay out the form liner, the direct heat caused the plastic to expand and they didn't realize that that would actually reflect into the concrete. So they poured the concrete on it, you know, did the, the insulation layer, poured the top coat and, you know, picked up and moved the paint on. So that's what they believe caused the issue, but they aren't 100% sure. So some panels have it and some panels don't. So that's, um, there's two panels on the east side of the building that actually have the most of that design and there's not not a single dip, dimple in it. So, like I said, they didn't realize it until they were at the time, stood up. But yeah, they won't, it won't cost the school anything to, to correct the issue. It'll look good when, everything, when everything's concluded. Can you talk about the finishing process on there? Because there is some other imperfections and the coloring will change, right? At, but what, isn't there a process at some point where you'll um, seal it? Yeah. yeah, so they will wash, they will wash, come back and wash with a solution the entire building to get any, so if there's any, extra cement or concrete that's on the brick, the face of the brick, that'll all be washed off. Um, some of the brick has a deep tone to it that'll actually come out when it is washed. So yeah, so the, the process would be, um, whenever they get the building off, they would come out and do a wash of the entire building. And then the upper concrete would be sealed. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. You want me to get in the schedule a little bit? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, as, you, as you all are aware, so this past month, um, the, big, the big one was we finished up the foundation's footings, we got the precast building, um, all the panels are erected. So um, that was the, the, the big hurdle over the last month. <coughs> so moving in from this board meeting until next board meeting, board meeting, some things that we can see take place at the job site is, um, we will be starting moving some steel into the site. So steel joists index, structural columns, um, we'll be mobilizing that in this week. We have. Um, the steel director is set up to start erecting the columns, the joists and that, and starting next week, Monday. Um, so that would be the, the big items that we would see going on at the side is getting all that put up um, in the main two-story classroom wing in the common section, and then hopefully we'll jump into the admin area and get that structure set up since that is uh, <coughs> a structural steel and metal frame portion of the building and there's, there's not precast there. Um, inside the ICC shelter, we are going to be working on the underground electrical and plumbing next week. We're going to be getting everything to gray and backfilled, and we will be pouring the interior slab on gray, <coughs> concrete slab on gray, um, starting the week after the 4th, 4th of July. So, and then that, that would be inside the building. Outside the building, we're actually prepping to pour the topping slab, which we have a picture of. Um, so on top of the double T roof system, we actually need to pour a quarter slab. So if they're working on setting on the reinforcement out there, and that is set to be poured on Friday of this week. So that'll get the building for the most part weather tight. And then um, while the concrete cures, we have to wait 30 days to adhere the roofing insulation. So the roofing will take place this, you know, 30 days from Friday, we will be able to start roofing. Um, and we will be doing in the meantime, some parapet framing, which the parapet is uh, the section of the wall that sticks above the roof uh, around the perimeter of the building. We'll be working on some framing details, getting some plywood getting that all wrapped in and ready for people. Greg, anything else you want me to touch base on? No, details? I think they're, you know, they're still welding. Um, yep. That's quite a process, but those walls all have to be welded and attached, and that has to all be inspected. Um, <clears throat> so far, we have a great welding team. Um, the welding inspector has been really happy with the welding that's taking place on the top of the wall as well as the bottom of the wall. They had two, full, two welders going at it pretty early mm -hmm. today, uh, working their way on the inside of um, uh, the classroom division. Um, um, this storm shell is not going anywhere. I was amazed today, I was walking this, 
this area where as the gym sits and then you have the admin area, I didn't realize they were going to pour another wall against that base of mm -hmm. that storm shelter. That remember these footings are seven feet deep. We're sitting on top of that. Then there's another wall and then there's floor and a concrete roof. So this thing's not going anywhere. Um, it shouldn't, um, but it's amazing to see the the uh, the, uh, the amount of work that you know structurally that goes into that storm shelter and the elevator. When's the masonry going to start on the elevator? So we had some preliminary conversations with the mason um, to get started out there next week and get the shaft built. Uh, they actually. He was on site and verified everything today, and there's actually two braces that are kind of in the way of logistically on how to get the, the shaft actually um, built. So what the, the intent is now is we're actually going to erect the whole um, elevator shaft after the steel is erected. So there's structural steel that is around the perimeter of the um, the CMU, so it does not directly tie into it, so that shaft can be built after. So that's the plan. That would take place uh, a little bit later if we. I would say it would probably be around mid July is when we get to that. There'll be a lot more activity down there now. Yep. A whole lot different. I saw Synergy was there today. Yep. The electricians are there, the plumbers will start yep. mobilizing as well. They'll be there hot and heavy next week um, to get started on some underground. And now that the precast panels are out of the way, that's a big safety um, concern lifted off of the construction team with the panel swinging. So, um, yeah, things are definitely going they're progressing there. We're going to get quite a few subcontractors on site. Yeah, there's quite a, quite a process. You know, we see that go up in terms of that. So it's, we have a bill. Are we going to be done in the August? So, yeah, February is what we're shooting for. So, we did we did run into a couple of days that um, delayed the precast a little bit due to the winds, lightning, with some storms blowing through. Um, so, oh, I would say we're within about a week. The week and a half of where we were originally shooting when we started, we, we may make that time up during construction pretty early to, to say that we're behind schedule by any means. So, um, but we were right within early February time frame. Thank you okay. very much. Thank yep. you. Thank you all. No Abel, Aye. 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 Blue. Aye. 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 Okay, the next item is just a discussion item, and then I'll, uh, it's just a presentation of natural homes with me. Uh, Emily Spindler of FPM Architects is ready to go. here to present on the Madison Park Elementary Project. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Do we have Greg, did we, did we get that? The image that I did not bring a print out of it. Oh, did uh, you? I thought you were bringing them. Oh, I've got one. Shoot. But uh, that's all right. Um, oh, shoot. Is the copier, uh, copier available? Yeah. I we'll just, just wanted, I just was that down. I don't know why I never, I sent the email and then I never brought I don't know. I thought you were bringing them, but I got a copy. So, yeah, yeah would you please, we'll get a copy made of where it is. Make some for John and, and um, for Barry, too. Would you get my, uh, me, too? Um, so, she'll go through the design. We, as you're aware, we kind of moved around a little bit on, we had started out at Colt, um, you know, and then we built a pre-K on at Colt. And then, um, then we came back to the uh, Madison Park site again. And uh, part of the discussion that, that centered on in terms of Madison Park, and she'll discuss this with you. Uh, since we are using health flight safety bonds, we will need to keep some of Madison Park, okay? And we've got to, uh, um, to be able to get, utilize that, that situation. And what we're going to propose tonight uh, on the design phase is keeping um, the existing uh, gymnasium area um, and then remodeling that office area, nurses area, making that a lunch room, and then utilizing the five classrooms that are currently used, and that's where preschool would go. Preschool currently has three classrooms. 
they would have five in this. And then the, the, when you will see the design then, we're looking at building 18,000 square feet for kindergarten and first grade and a new admin area. And um, we've been working through this. We were going to keep pulp, as you remember. So this is part of what we can do to uh, stay within the health and safety level um, to be able to use those funds. Um, it actually is, is a, the layout is very similar to what, to what it is right now. Um, and uh, I'll let Emily talk a little bit about this. You'll see the design. Uh, it's great that we purchased those two lots because that's gonna come in handy for this addition and parking. Um, and as you can take a look at, at, at where this um, currently is. And I'll let Emily go through the, yeah, we'll the follow, diagram. We can follow up with the digital copy too, so I apologize. But um, so yeah, as uh, uh, Greg mentioned, we've been doing a lot of different test fits on you know what the program, we some programming analysis of what how many classrooms, what size classrooms, and then based on HLS requirements and other um, funding mechanisms, making sure that um, we're finding a good compromise between what we're renovating and what we're building. And you know, we are have included in here with, uh, we've been working with Petcare on uh, square foot costs to help kind of solve a little bit chicken in the egg, you know, and um, what comes first. So we take a little bit, take a couple baby steps in one direction on one front, check it, on the budget, go back, you know, and, and it's been quite the process to this to get to this point. And um, I think the team's really happy with where we're at. We're looking at this would include a storm shelter in this facility as well. Um, it will likely be based on the, the way of the, the, the site and the type of building and size. It may be a different, it might be CMU, concrete masonry unit instead of the pre cap. We still will be weighing that option those options with Petro along the way. Um, so that would, that's looking to be maybe even just four classrooms up at the end of the wing. So um, those can function just as regular classrooms, they would just be the hardened, the hardened area. Um, I guess to kind of back up, this just had um, the, the left, the dash box on the left that has gym commons, lobby commons, pre-k playground, that's outdoor, which we'll have to see on the black and white. But, that's the portion of the building about a little less than 12,000 square feet that we'll be keeping. Um, and we've gone through, we've done, we've had our structural engineers out there, our mechanical plumbing engineers. We've uh, evaluated the system or the, the, the existing structure and what our options are there. And um, a lot of code research up to this point. Um, so we're looking at what walls we can take down to expand some of the classrooms. So we've got a few that are a little bit larger. Like Greg said, you guys currently have the three. Um, and then, yeah, um, everything kind of to the left, this this kind of run right here would be the new addition. Um, we'll still be refining, obviously, the admin and talking, starting once we get this, this base, um, I guess, big picture concept plan approved. We'll then go to the next level of starting to dig a little deeper, talk to the end users, um, refine the spaces a little bit more. Um, we've already started working with our civil um, engineer. They've got the survey done, which this is like the first time in a long time where we've come back with the survey. And normally there's like, oh man, there's this bus and we lost 20 feet here. Well, in this case, it was the opposite. So I think there's even better chance we'll have some more room on the site to try to get, the goal would be to try to get as much parking off the street as possible. So we're, we're that's a you know, priority we want to look at. Um, and you know, making sure if there's anything that we need to do um, on that end with setbacks and drainage and that that whole nine, the whole nine yards on that. Um, but yeah, um, you know, we were Greg and I were talking the other day. We we're just excited to kind of get this one, and we feel like it's in a good spot. We've got some collaboration spaces built in right now um, for uh, some extended learning areas, which I think is a great asset. Uh, to any building like this. Um, yeah, and I think. Essentially, too, what we do, we're taking the stage out of the gym to make that a full gymnasium. Um, that stage is not worthy of 
you know, it's so high and that type of thing. And the other thing in talking with Adam, that it'd be really nice if we could get the lunch tables into their own lunchroom. And that's that area of taking the old admin area, the nurse's office, that conference room, that whole area, and making a commons area there, um, you know, for kids to eat. That way the gymnasium space could be open. The pre-K space has really worked out nicely in the, in the center of the building. Um, and the fact that we have a, a playground that's already existing there for pre, pre-K that can be on the back side of the building. Um, and then, um, and then they, of course, they can always come out uh, their door and then use the city park, which is the main play facility for, for the entire building that, you know, to have that great park structure there and park playground there for kids. Um, the road where the buses continue to go through will still remain closed during the day for busing. Um, this also allows for a couple of different drop-offs. That pre-K could be dropped off over there by the lobby in the commons area so that the pre-K traffic is coming on Chestnut and then the buses would be flowing and then the regular drop-off for K-1 could happen at the administrative area. You can see the building is pretty well, the number of doors, this is very similar to State Street. There will be two sets of double doors that walk in. You can see where the admin area will be right there with those doors. So there would be another set of doors for buzzing in there. Um, the situation would be that um, the first grade would have a set of, we have to have so many toilets in this building by code, right? That's, that's not us deciding how many toilets we have in the building. That's building code. So first grade has a set of, Restrooms, pre-K will have a set of restrooms and then the kindergarten classrooms will have them in their classrooms which will help us with the storm zone um, in terms of that. Pre-K is already using common bathrooms at Siler. Uh, they have two sets of bathrooms at, in the basement of Siler and first grade using the restrooms already uh, in the first grade wing. But by putting in um, the restrooms in the kindergarten room, that makes it for a storm shelter because you need to have restrooms <coughs> space available for that. So that's the thinking of, of, of that premise. Um, you know, once again, you can see that we have five classrooms planned, which is what we, you know, currently have. But you also will have the extra two classes on the back side there, um, sitting that if it grows, you could have six classes. If not, you've got a separate art and music room uh, set up for that. Um, and then areas for tutoring in those uh, collaboration areas um, uh, to where people can work individually. If you've been in Madison Park, we have people that sit in the hall to work with kids. Well, these collaboration areas can be areas where they can work uh, independently with individual students um, in, in, in terms of that. So um, that's pretty much where, you know, we, we really like the site of Madison Park. It's a great, it's a great location uh, in terms of that. It's got that great park on the other side of it. Really helps shores up that, um, you know, that area. Um, but this way, this will allow us to do what we need to do um, and uh, get, get this, on this on this particular site. Just to add, sorry, the, the feeling of from basically where we have the building um, addition, we're keeping the same facade of the building as it currently exists. So from a neighbor's standpoint, we'll be extending it, but we're not going to be hugging the street any more than, than we were. Um, in fact, we're actually trying to um, look at options to get that parking. Right now, it's pretty that parking comes up right, across, right next to the building. So that's one thing we'd really like to try to uh, you know, have a little laundry space in the drop-off area. Um, the the, the pre-K classrooms would get brand new windows, doors, and then you'd have your heating and cooling system in there. So that the build that this portion of that building would be completely retro. Um, with uh, and you can see where we have some of those small offices in Madison Park. You may be particularly if you go towards the restrooms. There's two small, tiny offices there, but we're gonna take a wall out of there and extend that. We don't need those. So we'll extend that classroom um, to provide optimal space for our uh, pre-K learners um, with that situation. So, but everything would be retro there. New windows, um, 
rough the whole shooting match. So there's been any, oh, sorry, go ahead. Do we think there's enough space, there is enough space in that lobby commentary to do lunch so that they're not into that gym area? Okay. Um, and then do we have, what about special education? Is, we've got two specials um, kind of on that dip right there. Oh, that's for the, okay. So, well, we've got two special classrooms. Um, so the, we've got five classrooms for kindergarten and five classrooms for first grade. Mm -hmm. Two extra classrooms, whichever they would end up being, whatever they would end up being. And that's kind of the thought with the pre K. There's the three classrooms and then the two flex um, there. So we could put our needed into those mm -hmm. down to that area. Um, I know right now on the back side of Madison Park, there's a playground and stuff that's asphalted, so you know, your muddy condition. Does the park have a playground there? Say if it's raining and stuff, I know there's a lot of grass. Is there something there for yeah, the covered? Yeah, the new park has that foam surface, uh, the there, new okay. addition. And my understanding is, I don't know how far along they are, city is at some point, unless it's fallen by the wayside, the existing mulch area is another phase of their projects to renovate that park. So at some point, I would imagine that all, the weed forest, as we call it, um, will go away. And I would imagine it'll go with something, a similar product, but I don't know how far in the future that would be. I, we've had discussion with the city. Uh, they're looking at uh, replacing equipment and um, in that type of situation on there. We've already had some discussion. If this is where we go, um, the hard service playground is primarily for the pre-K so we can have it fenced in um, like we have similar down at Madison Park, um, that, that type of situation. So. Um, the current the current facility is a little less than what what did we say that was twenty thousand yep just under twenty just 000. under twenty and we're going to have thirty eight thousand square feet on that on the site so where the storm shelter you're proposing was on the north end is, yeah is where you're proposing it yes and okay the only two things that I see that I that I don't really like is like for example is the, is the lunch where they're going to be eating in the commons the kids over here have to travel the part of this get to and the health and a, a safety reason is they have to get to that safe room these kids got to go all the way over here now so it's like the longest distance to go it, i mean i think it would be better if ideally if it was in a central location it's almost like the admin and that need to be switched in We're my opinion pull the Kids closer to the playgrounds, pull them closer to the safe room, and also closer to the to the lunch room. It's just my opinion. I'm, I'm accepting feedback. Where, where is the storm <laughs> shelter? Where is the storm shelter? So they were proposing the garden. northern yeah. portion. Okay, okay. so like this said, area yeah, right this here. This floor was just one area that, like, right. we were looking at the size. Um, and like I said, we are accepting feedback. So um, you know, nothing. This is very early, um, and no. It, that's something that we've talked about with a lot of different options with how to manage the, like, you know, at one point we have pre-K over there, it's like, well, that's great, you know, those are the little kids that are like, they've got more snack and indoor play and that type of thing. Um, and the, you know, the admin, there's arguments to having that more centralized so that there's a, they're, they're not off in the distance or, you know, from a visual and supervision point of view too. Um, there's uh, there's an option too with, I mean, there's nothing to say really that it couldn't be, the storm shelter couldn't be those four first grade classrooms in the center. Right. You know? What are the two rooms right below the, the first first grade classroom? Um, one of them's black. One of them's the, right. Yeah, that's, that's showing me those darker areas that are toilets. Um, okay, I so you got that, bathroom and then... I think that one is unassigned at right now. That's unassigned right now. Okay. Yeah. No, they were saying this was for the first grade bathroom, which is what that one is. Okay. The kindergarten would have their own, and then pre-K would have that one. We can certainly look like there's a lot of flexibility in where we should shift something around or look at where we put the... I was just throwing my idea no, out there. That's, yeah. that's it. No, I, I think this, this awesome. is the first time you've seen this. We've been working on this for a while. So you know, to get it to a point where we can at least, you know, put it out there, you yeah. know. 
because we've done so many different things, you know, when we've been, we were at Colt, right? Well, then you take a look at the Colt site. Well, how can we maybe come back to Madison Park because that's a better location um, in terms of that? And how do we fit that on the site and, and what do we do? I just want to no, no, for, the, it's for the safety of the kids and the function for the gotcha. kids. You guys are going to be up north. That's what's going to, in my no, <laughs> no, this is what we're doing tonight. It's it's yeah. time to unveil this. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's just a sketch. Yeah. Okay. What's the uh, okay on the existing structure? You rip the plumbing out of that. Do you put all new plumbing into that existing structure, or is that? that so part those of five classrooms in the pre-K. Um, I guess the simple answer is is that like for example the bathrooms if we if we if there's a problem like, the idea is that we're gutting it and that we're bringing it up. Okay, yeah. I was just of the mindset that underneath Madison all that plumbs and holes needs to be ripped so out. We're, so that's, that's the question. Yeah, so we actually we're working with Bob to get um, the cam line camera the existing lines that are staying camera so that we and then also marked on a plan so that we know where they're running. Um, you know, it's early and it was quite a journey to get to where we are today with State Street. So that's definitely something where we are investigating early um, so that we can now, whenever we were on site from what we can see, it looked like the kindergarten, the classrooms that were removing, I don't know what they, I'm sorry to say kindergarten, I don't know if they're, what they're they are currently, yeah, they're but they've got the toilets inside the classrooms and it looked like maybe those were maybe added. There was a lot of um, settlement and issues with the plumbing, especially noticeable on that side, um, where the, the existing pre-K classrooms that we're showing, they don't have the toilets inside the classrooms currently. Um, they've got the group toilets, and so we were planning on replacing those fixtures. Um, but it definitely, like, it, um, we wouldn't want to put a brand new building on really bad for um, line. So, uh, if we would have to take a strip of the concrete out and replace the the lines there, because my silver isn't Madison our oldest existing structure. We know that it's been a hard problem with some of the pipes. Yeah, and I think that's over evaluating. Um, but in terms of the classroom spaces, those five classrooms are definitely the best classrooms we have in the building. Um, in terms of that. So this approach though is also enabling us to use help like this. Yes, absolutely. Like, because we have health life safety bonds is what we have. And with the original premise was that that's why we were using coal um, with that. But I think that as we structurally take a look at this and we continue to weigh this, um, that definitely if, you know, the classroom, the classroom structure itself is good, needs new windows, doors, which we know um and hvac was going to have to be replaced regardless right. you know with the new system of what we're doing there in a roof and we knew that and then it's just really coming down to the plumbing on particularly just that one set of restrooms right mm -hmm. because everything to the right of that that's all brand new so it's just one set of plumbing that we have in those restrooms that would be um, next to the pre-K, because everything else is getting new plumbing. That's all being tore out, mm -hmm. because that'll be reconstructed, you yeah, know, that. in the construction. So what we're looking at, part of the other thing that has to happen here is, and this would have had to happen in coal, we're working on the abatement, because we're getting the asbestos abatement, what those numbers are gonna be. We were going to have to abate coal anyway, to renovate. Right. I mean, that's just the fact when you're dealing with, with these facilities and it would have to be abated to even tear down that existing section of uh, Madison Park that we have. That has to be abated uh, before that has to be. And they're gonna be looking at floor tile, they'll be looking at window cocking, they'll be looking at ceilings, um, that type of stuff. All of the heavy hitters, lead paint, um, if there's any of that existing in the boiler room, that all has to be abated, um, even on a teardown. You can't just tear the building down and haul it to the landfill, right? So and that's all being worked in there. But really what it boils down to is, and if we have to replace the plumbing uh, to, the, to that, those other classroom, to that other wing, we will. Uh, we're already gonna be doing plumbing there anyway, right? In terms of that, so that's part of, what we got to do is see where the flow is right now to understand where things are flowing and 
what, what, what needs to take place there. Yeah. Not talking about exterior yet, we're not there yet. Nope. 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 Can you talk to my mind with this? So, <laughs> Emily's favorite subject because here, here's the deal. I, I'll, I'll, yeah, Thank you. I'll take it. Okay. Um, part of the part of the the whole process is this. Um, so, um, so I'm pretty much on the site every day down at State Street and seeing what's going on down at State Street. But then every Monday, we have. Um, a big meeting. It's 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 Pete, it's Eric, it's Emily, um, myself, and um, we 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 talk these different projects. First, it's State Street, then it's the SCI Center. So actually, that's coming. You want to give an update where we are there, and then we'll get into the time frame. Okay. Yeah. So on the SCI Center, um, I've been working with uh, David Lett and his departments for the different career pathways. We've um, completed each of the uh, department interviews, which really we want to, the last time we checked in and we developed a budget for the grant, it was in 2020, uh, we did both the budget and the floor plan. And so right now we are validating, we just got done with this first phase of validating the program um, spaces with the department heads. And that is like just big picture, making sure we don't have any major busts of like, whoa, they need, turns out they actually need double that amount of space. And so I'm happy to report that it all seems manageable two years later. Um, I think we're, we're looking at finessing and reconfiguring a couple walls, but I'm, I'm telling you like we're two years later for us all like be on the same page still as a pretty impressive feat. Um, David and Chris have been working really um, diligently with the grant side of things. Um, we've just, now that we've got all the department initial feedback and they've given us their major equipment, we're now test fitting um, test fitting those spaces, going through the major code study of where do we need, now that we know where the spaces are, where do the fire separations need to go. Since we may be having, or since we have some um, community colleges there, we're looking at the higher ed code requirements and how those bit differ from education, PK 12 education, um, energy code, all the plumbing codes, all those fun things. We're just kind of um, checking those boxes. Um, and then, uh, then of course, we're getting close. We're hoping by the end of, you know, around 4th of July, we'll be able to give something, hand something over for Petker to get their hands on. Now that we know, does this wall need to go all the way up to the deck? What do we need to do with the exterior wall? So they can gut check the budget again. Um, I don't even, you know, that's when I want to drag my Petker friend up here. But, um, you know, budget is obviously something we've got a close eye on just with how everything's been changing. Um, in the last couple of years. Um, but other than that, you know, um, that's getting really exciting. And so, like Greg mentioned, we um, we started with the schedules and we're really looking at those hand in hand as well as how State Street's going to be wrapping up. And so we, we think we've come, we're crossing out of the given what we think we can commit to for design to um, Greg. Hector's putting their final touches on it. Um, and hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll be able to move on to the next stage. What we want to do is make sure that we're phasing things um, appropriately, that we're not, we're being strategic on how we issue these bids. Like, for example, right now we're looking at staggering SCI, getting that out a little bit sooner because that's the one that's interior, there's no building envelope, you know, structure, lead times, that kind of thing. Um, but that's something that you know, having this construction manager on board, they're able to keep a, you know their ears to the ground and hearing things like, and they'll be guiding us along the way of when to try to get things out. And so, Greg, I'll let you if you want to talk more specific. So, timeline. really, what what we're looking at is we're going to stagger this, as Emily said, because we'd like to stagger this coming off of State Street so that when State Street's done, that maybe we can potentially keep some of the contractors here um, to move just from here to there. Um, and so we're looking at getting uh, getting this one out early fall, SCI Center, right? And to the board for approval of bids, um, so that that work can commence 
December, January, somewhere in there, because basically we want to bring this building on by August, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a time frame in terms of the amount of work that needs to be done in the innovation center itself, right? The good thing is it's all interior work. Um, so it's good winter work for contractors to line that up ahead of time. Then the thought process on, and then you will see the final design before it goes out to bid. We're still in the preliminary work. If you haven't been, it's just a big steel build. It's just a big building with a concrete floor on it, right? It's just a shell of a building. Uh, and, and once we get that done, um, then that will come back to the board as well uh, in terms of that before it goes out to bid. Madison Park, we're looking at getting it out later and then possibly awarding at the December board meeting yeah. for the construction to start that. The biggest thing, it's all about timing, right? So if we can get turnkey into State Street where teachers can do some moving over the spring months to get their incidentals or stuff that they're not using moved into State Street ahead of time so that as soon as the last day of school, we want out the door and we're moving. People need to be boxed up and ready to go because we're not waiting. And uh, because the timing has to be right on this uh, with Madison Park because we're gonna need to tear part of it down. Well, first it has to be abated before we can do anything. So we'll study how that abatement could take place um, in terms of that then once that because actually the idea is is to bring uh, madison park opening for the school year 2024 so you see we've got a lot of things you're going to bring state street and the innovation center on next summer and then you're going to bring madison park on the following the following summer and then we'll be moving madison park to colt um, it's going to house Madison Park for essentially that for the year to construct Madison Park. Um, in terms of that, that's how it, it's it's tight. Emily, that's what Emily worries about. But you know, us, me and Pecker, we just think, all right, let's get this thing designed and let's get this thing out the door to bid, right? And it, it'll work. Um, but we've got a lot of, um, and, and there's some reasoning behind this because there's going to be a big bid letting go in St. Louis, about 350 million. Yeah, that, those and things. these are things that Petker is watching because there's a lot of bids going to be starting to roll, especially one that big. Um, and we want to make sure that we're in that window that we're not competing with that with that big bid, um, that type of situation. So we're we're really kind of working the schedule and fine tuning things. Um, but we're getting there. I mean, it, it just takes a little bit of time to get things put together. Yeah, and the good thing is that this, we have the benefits of State Street behind us. Um, so, you know, we aren't starting from ground zero. We know a lot of this, you know, a lot of things like Bob was saying, like, this is what we want at Madison Park, or this is, um, you know, even from Interior Palace. We want, like, you guys to be able to have the, the main flooring. We want that to be similar to where you guys don't have this manufacturer or that, or the, you know, minimize that, the type of ceiling curve that we have, you know, um, be efficient with those um, decisions. And, you know, that's what I told, I'm gonna be like, I told Becker and Gray, I'm like, I'm gonna be a slave driver, like, look for me, I'm gonna have a meeting, all the meetings laid out and check, 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 and um, I'll be on your guys' cases. Because it is aggressive, I'm not gonna lie to anybody, it is an aggressive schedule, um, but that's what our goal is, is to try to have it uh, awarded by the end of this year. Um, so, we can do it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, if, if you look at it, you know, part of the advantage of the Madison Park site is we have utilities existing on the site. Yeah. So it's not like we have to bring utilities to the site um, in, in that type of situation. And uh, the site is relatively flat. And, you know, with that, with that situation, so, um, but you know, if all goes right so far, it's gone right. Um, with where we are on State Street, we don't see any reason the other projects can't go um, um, ready to go um, once we identify the footprint of um, of the center. Um, then we'll come back and 
we'll start the process and putting put together the final design uh, footprint and scope for that to get that out to bid and uh, get that work underway uh, for the winter. And the nice thing is State Street will be all buttoned up and they'll be working once they get that thing all enclosed with windows, doors, everything inside of there, they'll start to come together, put that together. Um, so we're hoping maybe with the work at the Innovation Center, the electrical company that's already here on site for State Street, we just think about you know putting a bid in for the Innovation Center for its electrical, HVACs, um, that type of situation so we can get some, uh, you know, and the general contractor with Lidican may bid too uh, on these projects since they're already uh, already here uh, with that. So that's where we, we, you know, I haven't, we haven't, you know, we've just been working through different scenarios and different things to get it to come to this point. Um, you know, but that's our, that's that's the schedule. What's the, uh, so on the Madison Park one, your estimated cost on that is gonna be 5.5? The, the estimated cost is 13.5. Oh, Madison? 13.5. Now, it may not, but we're, but here, here's the deal. This is, this is the craziness of this market, right? We were just talking about this, um, and this is a, that's a conservative number. Now, it could come in at 3.75, but we're not going to see the, the square footage cost to build State Street was 290 hard cost. So you can see the difference of what just a few months will work uh, to, to do that um, in terms of that. Um, and that includes renovation costs. We're projecting a 275 square foot on rental and then uh, 400 on, on new construction. So you can see the difference of the fluctuation of the market. Now, it could be a better market by then. Steel may be coming down, right? And part of the part of the plan is, and then you have, out of that, you have another million dollars that we've set aside for Madison Park HVAC out of S. So the HVAC system's been, uh, you know, essentially been paid for um, in terms of that, just like it was with State Street. Um, so. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's where we are at this point in time. It could change um, as we move, move forward. But, um, you know, steel prices have dropped. Yeah, and just to give a little history, back in two, 2000, even as back as 2017, we were, we were looking at costs per square foot for new, new addition, new construction, it was 275 a square foot. Fast forward to when did we open bids just last last fall for State Street and it was two ninety three. So in four years or whatever, it went twenty dollars per foot. We opened bids for a school um, the spring, it was already up from two ninety three. What State Street was, it was up to three thirty. We just opened up another one and it was almost near four hundred. And that's like Petker can test markets and get bids, but the real numbers that we we feel are the most um, reliable are the ones that are coming in that are similar in scope and size. And so it's absolutely crazy. Um, you know, it, you've never, I don't think anybody's seen anything like this. For it to go up, I mean, to dark, to, I, if you would have told me in last September that we were gonna be looking at $400 a square foot, I would never, as a budget number, you know, that just seems, but, that's where we're, that's where But we're, that's it could, you know what, it, it could come in less too. You know, we're just, we're, we're, we're being conservative with that number, right? In terms of that. Part of the other process that we're working on too through this, this last issuance of some bonds too, is that one of the things, and I know Mark raised this question the last time, what are we doing with the roofs on this building? Well, we've got a plan for the roofs, okay? So as we, get buildings built, then we're gonna come in and we're gonna finish the rest of the roofs, all right? So that this whole roofing on this facility will be completely replaced and ready to go. Um, and that's that's the plan um, to get that done also 
over this period of time. We'd like to maybe get some of these other buildings going. That might be something that we bid out a roofing project since we'll be doing Madison Park and we may bid this room, right? To get a to get a um, to get a, a better bang for the buck if that's what it's going to take, right? So, but that is in the plan to so essentially this building um, when we get done with this building, we're doing um, door work um, up here at the high school. We'll be replacing. What are we replacing, Bob? What is the what exactly? Replacing all of the doors in the high school proper. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. All of all of the existing doors. The doors are going to be the same kind of doors that are in the the new doors we put in the middle school. We're not going to have the locking pin that goes into the top and the bottom of the frame, uh, which causes us a lot of problems. We have problems with these doors, the crash bars all the time. They're right now 25 years old. Uh, I have to have them worked on. It, it, uh, it seems like constantly because we'll have a door that just won't shut. Just won't shut. We can, and yeah. you, you gotta go and beat on the crash bar in order to release the pin because the pin's worn or whatever. So we've had, I've had numerous doors here worked on and, uh, and we just gotta, we just gotta take care of them. Uh, we've got, uh, so we're putting in a, a better door that locks into the frame uh, instead of the pins. And uh, like I said, they'll be just like the doors in the middle school. So if you look at those, you'll know, but there are those we replaced uh, four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, four years ago, so, uh, and they're really good strong doors and it'll, it'll make a big difference here, especially in today's world. In today's world, we need to do it. And such. Um, we, we can't afford to have a door that obviously doesn't shut. Doesn't shut. So, and uh, yeah, we're working with that. We did fill out a, 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 a grant for uh, and Mrs. Thompson and Mrs. Ellis got, got that thing arrived on their desk. When I was on vacation, I said, geez, I think we need to apply for that. I'm sure they had some bad things to say about me. Uh, oh, well, you got it, Della. Not at all. all. I got that. Yes. <laughs> no, and Della, too. Um, yes. I'm sure they were thinking, yes. that sucker's on vacation, and then this lands on our desk. Uh, shame on him. But, you know, we, we've applied for a, uh, through uh, the federal uh, government for safety program for a grant. If not, they will be offering another school uh, maintenance grant uh, that we will put in for at least you know that to get that accomplished so really by the time when madison park comes on litchfield high school will have and the middle school should have all of the roofs updated the tuck pointing and bob will talk a little bit about that when he gets to his report that'll be done if you notice the sidewalks have been replaced there's no more cracks out there so um so really in at the end of you know, if everything goes right, you'll have brand new buildings updated. This building will be completely updated. And then, you know, then you're ready for the next 20, 30 years with just routine maintenance um, on that, right? Um, so that that's the plan. That's the schedule uh, that we're, we're trying to uh, get through right now. And no, we there's a lot of work that goes in, a lot of phone calls and a lot of conversations. My last point on the same is $28 million spent as the district holds. We still need that extra gymnasium that we're not going to get based off these plans or the existing school that I bought for on the other one that we decided not to build the school gym there. I hate to spend that much money and then shortchange ourselves not putting in a pool gym in one of these new schools. Because uh, I know, obviously, I coach here, so there's practice times are always an issue. So that's just my thought on it, but that's what it is. motion by the Board of Education to approve the amended budget for fiscal year 2021-2022 as presented by Superintendent Dr. Gregory Kirschnow, Chief Financial Officer for the Lake Community School District Number 12. I have a motion, please. Second. Any and a second, please. Second. Dr. Kirschnow, anything? No. Roll call, please. Abel? Aye. Abel? Aye. Valeska? Aye. Blue? Aye. Kane? Aye. 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 Aye.
Charlie Wilson by the Board of Education to approve the proposed material fees, Chromebook fees, and extracurricular activity fees for the 2022 to 2023 school year. Make a motion, please. So moved. Any motion and a second, please. Second. Any second question? You know, this year, kids will eat free. Um, we're part of the CEP program, so that's the reason why there's no, no cost for, for meals this year. Um, and then we kept the fees the same um, with no increase in fees um, from, from the previous year. So, um, then the Chromebook fees, we don't charge that. That's if you bust one and really abuse one, then that is a fee structure that needs to be cost if you intentionally break the Chromebook. Um, but other than that, everything stays pretty much the same. And then, but every student that wants to eat breakfast and lunch next year may do so at no cost. Roll call, please. Abel? Aye. England? Aye. Valesco? Aye. Blue? Aye. Kane? Aye. Tyler? Aye. Thank you. Motion by the Board of Education to approve the Illinois County's Improvement <coughs> Trust as the district's property and casualty insurance. Yeah, no, I think that as I indicated in, in the notes that um, as things, uh, you know, we, we uh, our workers' compensation, we really didn't have a great year um, in terms of that. So um, we did see reflected an increase there. And then when we looked at the property and casualty insurance, that's going up um, nationwide, trend-wise. We did add some additional cybersecurity. We've added um, the um, sexual abuse, uh, that type of situation. And when you do that, we ended up with a 14.19% increase. So the total package cost was 214.725, or basically re reflected at 26,688 over last year's increase. Abel? Aye. Blue? Aye. Blue? Aye. Hey. Hi. 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 On that, what was the last uh, United Healthcare? What was the last person you worked with? How long have you been with United? For Blue Cross Blue Shield? Like whoever we're doing right now, is it the, it's not the United Healthcare on the left. No, no. no. It's our new one. Gotcha. Oh, with the uh, Illinois Trust? Oh, it's all on the same? Yeah, it's all on the same package. Oh, okay. They package it together. I can tell you that's what the injury industry is seeing that in larger increases. I sent back several articles that I've seen on the increases of that. Any other questions? Roll call, please. April? Aye. England? Aye. Valeska? Aye. Blue? Aye. Kane? Aye. Tyler? Aye. I would propose motion that the Board of Education to approve the contract with United Healthcare for employee health benefits. 2022-2023 Yeah, I, I think basically when you look at it, the district um, has been with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, we've received, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the initial request from Blue Cross Blue Shield indicated a um, a staggering 24.5% um, increase in health insurance on the Black Road Shield. Okay. And uh, through further negotiations um, with Cornerstone, who is our, our brokerage, uh, then the bid, bid out. And we bid all of the players. It was Blue Cross Blue Shield, we bid Sigma, we bid Aetna, uh, we bid United Healthcare, we bid Alliance, or um, the, um, <coughs> oh, 
Live 360, which is a company out of Springfield. Um, and then the reality was that um, as we did the bidding and uh, for this, and I met with the insurance committee from the LEA that's involved in this <coughs> conversation as well. Uh, United Healthcare, uh, we came in at, at uh, 7.2 percent increase uh, with United Healthcare, which is less than inflation right now, right? Um, and the, the added benefit to going to United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, or Springfield Clinic comes back into the fold because that's part of the network now uh, with United Healthcare. So our employees will have access to Springfield Clinic, um, which they did not have under Blue Cross Blue Shield. That was out of network situation. So that's where we're at. Um, uh, you know, overall, when you look at the increase, you know, 7% seems to be where the market's at. Remember coming off of Blue Cross Blue Shield, remember when we signed for 8% over two years, so it was 4% over both years. However, we, you know, and, and looking at the health insurance the way it is right now, where it's working, 25.4 is way too much. When you look at our, when you look at our use, um, we didn't, that, that wasn't warranted. They actually came down to 16 percent, so that shows you uh, where 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 they were uh, in terms of that. So, but everybody has agreed to that, and that's where we are. Roll call, please. Abel, aye. England, aye. Valesco, aye. motion by the Board of Education to approve a resolution to purchase the real property located at 1100 Old Route 66 North, Litchfield, Illinois, from the Livingstone Church for the amount of $800,000. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. England, any second, please? Second. Lillian? Um, the, uh, if approved this evening, approving the resolution, uh, Mrs. Abel will close on the property on Friday. And then after that, we will have ownership of, of the property, and then we'll begin to work on, on the transition into that. The initial thought process of the transition will be um, the administrative offices and IT is already packing up, and we'll be ready to make the move to move IT out of the junior high. And uh, that particular area, Mrs. Thompson will be moving, uh, will be moving um, Dr. Lett as well out of Siler. Um, and uh, that's how we'll begin the process to do that. The ROE will be moving their stuff in on the June 30th to just at least get their stuff out of um, the uh, uh, high school and then. Um, so they're on board and, and ready to go as well for the uh, safe school. Um, and then we'll be working on the keys and getting all of that done with winter's <coughs> I got it all ready to go. He's got, we'll get all ready Everything, to go. every part of it is all ready to go. I'm just waiting for Friday. And then we'll get it closed and then we'll, we'll go from there. So that's that's the transition plan. Um, the intent would be to uh, have our July board meeting there. I had a lot of people ask me, Greg, what do we do this? Well, what's going to be with this property? Is there any way we can supplement the paper just like that? Say, hey, this is what's going to be in here. I don't know if we can do a draw up or something just to give the community, hey, this is why we need this space. There's a lot of people saying, why are you doing this? That's, I'm, I just want to be able to say, hey, we'll look at the paper. Some, some sort of informative thing that we can show people why we're doing what we're doing out there for another almost one year. Yeah, we can put together a. It was sort of in the paper. I mean, John and I both talked to Dr. First now after the last meeting, and Dr. First went through step by step all the things that he okay. just said that the building would be used for. Sure. Uh, I mean, I'm happy. To, I mean, I'm happy to re to report that again. No, but but we will. I know. see a picture. Nobody. I, I don't want to finish this. Right now. Oh, Cuba. I don't see. <laughs> see a picture, they start looking. Okay. Right. Roll call, please. Abel? Aye. England? Aye. Telesco? No. Bloom? Aye. Hayes? Aye. Tyers? Aye. I have a proposed motion by the Board of Education to approve a lease agreement, a lease agreement between the Richfield Community Union School District Number 12 
and the Regional Office of Education Number 3 for classroom space at the Regional State School. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. England and a second? Second. Bloom? Any more thoughts? Any more no, oh, I think, you know, they're going to be leasing space over the period of years that we put in there. It'll be a nice addition for um, uh, for our administration at the high school and the middle school to have that availability of, of that program here. Um, and the ROE is excited about um, having their safe school here for the school districts, primarily Litchfield and Hillsboro. Um, you know, in terms of that, because of the short difference, although it's open to everybody, Raymond will send students here, and uh, that type of situation. Um, the, the reality is, is that as we look to potential down the road, since we're already, um, you know, with some of the proximity that we have with the Macoupin County Schools, they may be tapping into this resource as well. Uh, and then the ROE is excited about um, not having to rent space in Edwardsville for professional development that they can come to Litchfield and use the area uh, for local PD um, or school districts on this side. Um, and it will be large enough to house the PD that, that they have available um, for that. Professional development is another, another key, key piece of, 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 of the facility. Um, it's a good move for the district with the lease. Um, they're going to, you know, uh, provide revenue coming in on that side, and then we will be saving money on the alternative side, not the Christmont side, but on the, on the Cornerstone side, the special ed side. But we're, we're not going to be sending students to the Christmont side on Columbus Street. Roll call, please. Aye. I have a proposed motion by the Board of Education to approve the first reading of board revisions to policy, administrative procedures, and exhibits from issue 109. May I have a motion, please? Somebody. Can you a second, please? Second. No, it's just the first read. Okay. All right. This is a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. No. Information <coughs> items? Um, I guess we can start with uh, our, the enrollment is in there, uh, and then the make it report is in there, and then I'll turn it over to the administrators. Um, um, with where we're at, so I'll start with uh, Mr. Hyger, Mr. Faber, with Camp Panther. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, two successful weeks so far. If you were on your district app last Friday, tor uh, not tornadoes, I'm sorry, 70 mile per hour winds do not keep us from going on field trips at, at Litchfield, nor does it cancel Camp Panther. We started the day without power. Um, but things were open up north, and so we did business as usual that day. Um, and it might have been a better outcome for some of the kids that were sitting at home without power all day, or the next day, or the next day. Uh, so it was nice to do some things that were a little more usual. Uh, I think enrollment's been good. Most of the kids are attending on a regular basis. Uh, the YMCA, which is coming to Litchfield, is providing part of our extension program, our enrichment program. Uh, they've really stepped it up this year. They did a good job last year. They're doing an even better job this year. Uh, very responsive to input and meeting the needs of our kids. So they've also offered some very good programs, as has uh, U of I Extension. They've done a great job also. So uh, exposing kids to some of the programs in our schools, because those programs also offer things outside the school day and outside of Camp Panther. So it's a good preview, possibly, for the community of what the YMCA will be offering whenever they are fully established here in Litchfield. Um, prizes are in place, got a lot of exciting things coming up this week, uh, hopefully have a little media coverage of what's going on there. Uh, and if you've had a chance, if you want to see what things look like, we have been publishing every week a little short video of kind of what goes on behind the scenes. It's not everything, but it gives you kind of a glimpse, a two or three minute glimpse of kind of what the Panther camp or the camp looks like. Mr. Hyer, anything you'd like to add to that? It's just a 
the only thing I would add is just, you know, the staff, the students alike are all having a great time every day. We see kids walking in with a smile on their face. Uh, throw props to our um, food service department that's been providing meals, uh, breakfast and lunch. It's been absolutely fantastic. They've done a great job with that, uh, even with our field trip of packing, you know, 200 some odd meals to take on a field trip. So um, it's just been a wonderful time. I, I, I know Mr. Faber would agree. I highly encourage you, this is our last week, but if you've got time to stop by during the day between the hours of 8 and 1.30, we highly encourage you to stop by Colt. It's just, Doc was there, he's been there a few times. It's just a great atmosphere. It's, you won't, you can't leave without a smile on your face. And pre-K kids are pretty content as well. It's been a pretty good time for them too. So we got a little program going on over there as well. So any questions about the program or how things are going? Anything you've been heard, positive, negative, anything you need us to address? Good. Yep. And having some good uh, middle school and high school helpers as well have come in and volunteer and helped us a bit. So that's been a nice addition. Also, gives some of our kids some of their volunteer hours they need for National Honor Society and those sorts of things as well. So that's worked out well. Thank you. Dr. Tatum, you had the track people there. We had track. We don't, we don't have summer school this year, though I know the kids thoroughly enjoyed it last year. Um, not really, not so much. <laughs> uh, we, we did not. Um, but the custodians have the building looking fantastic. And anything that we've thrown at them, you know, we know that we're cleaning one space from where technology was for our social worker and Shane Grammer's office upstairs. And we've kind of moved some things around to build a special ed classroom downstairs and offices for special ed <coughs> downstairs. They've already gotten a lot of those things done. Um, I know FCA had um, a camp a couple of weeks ago, and I, you can hear the girls, middle school girls, playing ball. Now they're kind of doing some summer league where they're kind of traveling around playing. And, and uh, things are, are fairly quiet for now at the middle school. Mrs. Ellis. Okay. Uh, well, we had the seniors sports banquet and graduation since the last time that we've met. Um, we got started right away with summer school. We do have about 30 kids in credit recovery, but we also have, and I don't know the exact number on this, um, several students just taking extra courses this summer online to free up extra time in their schedule for next year. So um, we were able to offer that. Uh, the credit recovery is done in person because those kids need a little extra oversight <laughs> um, in completing their work. So uh, they're working hard. That's going through next week, next Tuesday, I believe. Um, June has been pretty much just kind of future planning. We have <coughs> freshman orientation. Hillary's on vacation, um, or seeing one of her kids off go to college orientation, actually. Uh, but she has a plan in place and has the, you know, the whole day lined out. Uh, student volunteers. Uh, we've been meeting about the Innovation Center, which Emily alluded to. So I've uh, been, uh, you know, sitting in, just kind of listening in on those meetings and, and what um, our staff needs to, to see that through. I've uh, been working a bit on um, some of the reimagining of the high school and the portrait of the graduate. Um, we've been meeting with a couple of kind of mentor schools in uh, Vienna, which is South, and uh, Mattoon as well. Um, so these are schools that have been there or are in the process of, and um, just really a wealth of information um, of how to, to put all of these pieces um, and make them all fit together. And then I did want to update you on the co-op with not all of it has um, that we've extended the football um, camp uh, that they're doing this uh, last week and, and this week. Uh, uh, Coach Carlson says that five have been there consistently. Uh, there will be a six. There was one that was awaiting clearance. I think he had some surgery. And then three more will be there after summer school. So that's a total of nine. He said that he was excited. The parents were very eager to be involved. Um, they have started selling the gold cards. And I guess these students uh, from Mount Olive uh, the expectation is for them to sell about 10 on average, and they've, they've sold 15 on average. So, so they're dedicated and they're doing their part there. Uh, 47 players across the program, 25 varsity, and 22 freshmen. So uh, that number is up from last year. That's what I got. Any questions? This is Thompson. Yeah, so we have, after tonight, we'll have filled everything for our grant. Um, on the position, so that is exciting. I have an email waiting to go out saying, like, hey, we can start meeting um, and getting the team together for that. So that 
I'm just beyond excited that we have filled those positions with really top quality people. Um, we also have registration getting ready to roll out. Uh, registration is only going to be online again this year, um, starting July 11th, and it will close August 5th. So, um, but again, we'll be able to do everything online. Um, once building secretaries start back, you know, they'll make some phone calls to the handful of people that don't get it done and we'll open it back up. Oh, I think just, it's rocking and rolling. Just, yeah. yeah things, things, are, to, things are happening. And you know, to be able to find a, uh, a behavioral specialist yeah. uh, that's going to come in and help our staff and help with, with students, and then the addition of another counselor and the addition of another social worker, you know, that community partnership grant is going to be huge uh, as the team puts together to work with um, our kids and our staff. Um, so we're really, really excited to have these folks joining our, joining our, our, our team. Um, and then it'll be, there will be, once everything puts together, we'll come before the board and, and, and then lay out the plan. Uh, we had to get the players, we had a vision, but we had to get the players. Well, um, and, and, we had and to get the team. We had to get the team. And as everyone has said, well, can you walk us through what a typical day looks like and, and what? No, I can't. <laughs> I would love to, but I can't because we, we have these grand ideas on what it's going to look like, but until we actually knew, you know, the certification of all these people and what they could, all these people could do, like, we still have to, now, now that we know about the players, we will sit down and devise, like, what, what each person will, their primary role will be. And I, all I can say is this, the kids are going to benefit. The, the team is, a, is amazing and the kids will benefit. And, yeah. and, and the teachers too. I, I, because every new hire, we've, we've said like, you know, part of your new role though is to go in and meet with the teachers too and do some either classroom intervention or some classroom training or, you know, some, some individualized things. Um, so I hope that it gives them a sense of relief to and support so yeah. Bob you want to give them a little bit of update on the projects up here that you've yeah. been busy with well, they're about all done I know <laughs> I didn't I, we didn't we didn't originally plan on scheduling it I didn't have it scheduled the way it worked out but the different players for the parking lot the sidewalks and the pointing work and work above the radius room and all because of all the rain we've had previous, it just threw their schedules off and they all called me pretty much at the same time and said, can we get started? So uh, so we did and pretty much everything was going on at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I know Juletta and everybody in the high school, all the things, they didn't, nobody knew where to park. It was, it was just crazy, they didn't know what door to come in, you know, but uh, the high school parking lot is done. We saw the new, the concrete uh, fix out front has all been completed. Uh, you'll notice, I think, that there are ceiling tiles along this row here. There's not a stain in one of them. And that part of it was finished before the two huge rainstorms we had in the last three weeks or so. And it didn't leak a drop. And it was pretty obvious once they opened up and took out the bottom two layers of brick above the radius room, we discovered numerous areas where there's no doubt, no wonder why it wasn't leaking, okay? It, it was, I'll show you some pictures if you wanna see it, but uh, it was something, but they got it all done. It's all fixed, it's been cleaned, it's been sealed, they finished, they sealed it yesterday. Um, and they have finished the south side of the Simmons Gym, that's all complete. You can walk out the back doors and look up and you can see what they've done with the tuck pointing. He's, well, he's finishing up the, the work around the windows right now, which he'll probably have done tomorrow. Um, we had the, the coping at the top of the, okay, you can look up, that had to be patched, and you can see where that was done. It's visible, but it's, it's fixed. And uh, they started work on the north side of the gym um, day before yesterday, and they, they figured they'll probably have everything wrapped up by the no later than the end of next week that's kind of where we are and those are 
those are the big projects you know going on here uh, now and uh, and they're all done so <laughs> and, and I expected them to flow into July so we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be complete this month with all of that yeah so when, you, when you explain what the what that looked like up there well, well I'll tell you, no and when he, took out the like river. he started on this end which is where the worst the biggest part of the leak was that's not why he started there but that's where he happened to start and when he pulled out, when he pulled out, he took it out, the brick out in sections about uh, two and a half to three feet. He didn't want to get too far you know, in front of him, so he'd take out a section and then whatever. But when he pulled out the first section, he found where in one case, you can, I have pictures of it, where they had taken conduit and there was, there was flashing going up under, in the wall like it was supposed to, which is what they did this time. But hey, somebody had, I guess when they built it, I'm not exactly sure why, they had actually ran conduit down through the flashing. <laughs> and so they cut holes in it. And, the, and you can see it. And there's a big old hole this big, and there's a piece of flashing, you know, about as big as my two fingers, and there's virtually nothing around, around it, wow. nothing to seal it. So that was one problem. And then I guess this was re-roofed at some point That's during right. the last 25 years. I don't know how many times. Sure. But the flashing that came out, well, the roofers took it and just bent it up and so it was rolled <laughs> and the flashing they put they, they didn't come together so as the water came down soaked into the brick came down it hit that and it just ran right off the flashing and there's no there's no wonder why this leaked okay so the fix is they they told me by the way the, the fix is they guaranteed it forever that's what that's what it says Forever, it's it'll never going to. Leak. Leak. <laughs> they said it will never leak again unless we pull holes. In. Yeah, unless we draw a hole in it again. <laughs> well, I don't plan to be around forever. No. Okay, so I will, I don't know if that's going to hold true, but uh, but what he did, I was up on the roof several times, and I don't like to get on roofs. Okay, but I was up there because I wanted to see it firsthand, and what they did, I mean, he he, it, Very it, took, it took him nearly three weeks to do the work up here. So and it's uh, it's it's going to be good, and you can see visible visibly what they did on the on the high school kids uh, up there. You can you can look up there and see what it's done. So um, it it looks looks really good, uh, and and I'm hoping it'll take care of the leaks. We'll see. I know that Matt I know that uh, Matt Blusco will be happy if uh, if his classroom doesn't leak anymore, and uh, I I hope that. What they're doing on that end will take care of that problem, and I hope that what they did here, the bleachers at the, in the Simmons gym won't leak anymore. So, um, and the custodians will sure be happy about that, not having to clean up the water every time it rains. So, yeah. Yeah, all, it's all, all it's all come together. The parking lot looks great back there. Yeah. The sidewalk work, and remember the maintenance grants paid for. Uh, you know, a majority of. Uh, a yeah, good work, portion of it. Yeah. A good portion of it. And then, um, like I said, it, it's work that needed to be done. And there's no doubt that if this had not been addressed, it would have just oh, yeah. continued to deteriorate. It would have. And, and also, so you know, I, yesterday I had a contractor come in and look at all of the roofs on all of the schools to see if there might have been any damage from hail from, you know, because. I don't know, all of us live here, you know, and different people I talk to experience different sizes of hail depending on where they were in town. So I don't really know what we got here or, you know, or at Madison Park someplace else, but he's going to give me a report, uh, Dr. Furstenau and I, uh, we'll probably have it next week, if we found anything significant, so we can give it to the insurance company if, you know, hopefully maybe we've got some really bad damage and the insurance I can't get them until the after the next board meeting. They, they want their money. Yeah, they, they would, wouldn't give them they, they, they wouldn't give them to me. They told me at the beginning you can have them before and then I, I said, okay, I'm ready to come and get them. And they said, well, their home office changed their mind oh. and said, you can't have them until you pay for them. So since I can't pay for them until your next board meeting, I'll take them a check they're the all next the day. Lot. And they're on the lot. They're all done. They got the yeah. lettering and the numbers yeah. and everything. Everything's on them. But I, I can't bring them here. So, <laughs> so we're, 
Uh, so we're, we're waiting on it. So, yeah. And then Thank you. we're working on the transportation plan too. What will we have? One of the old ones we will have, have. Well, we'll have two we'll have older two buses. buses. But one of them is really old. One yeah. of them is a '95. Okay, still, and uh, that's the only old, really old bus we have. The other one is one of our. Oh, I think it's a 2007 or 2008. I can't remember for sure now, and it's a pretty good bus. So you know, but. But we do have to replace the back door on it this summer because the back door rusted out. So mm -hmm. that's being done. But uh, other than other than that, it's going to be a good bus. Yeah. So we'll, I, I think we should probably replace the one older bus. Okay. Yeah, we're that's talking about point. that. And then, then, we, then the rotation and the will rotation be completely set, then. so that you know someday you won't have us come to you and tell you we need nine buses nine buses at the same time so. <laughs> at the same time hopefully that will never happen uh, again. hopefully that doesn't happen again <laughs> that is set up to naturally replace buses when it needs to be replaced yeah. Yeah. so and we'll, we'll hopefully get that done you know um in, in the following year thank you to your bus drivers that are working this summer too it's great for the program I think more i'm sorry thank you to the bus drivers that are working this summer <coughs> yeah. i think yeah. it, it really helps yeah. 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 Really yeah. Yeah. the kids to yeah, they're, and they're all glad to do it. Of course, we're all getting paid for it. Too. It's yeah. a yeah, it's appreciated. Yeah. But they're having a little They're having a good time. So. But, you know, when you look at it, I think, you know, you drop in over there and you see the staff working with kids. This is a little different environment than a classroom environment, you know. It, it's the same thing, but it's kind of a different environment where they get to know these kids a little bit, you know, in, the, in that situation. And, you know, the things that they're getting to do and uh, with literacy is the focus it's all it's it's good it will pay off uh, for, for the kids but no and then you've got the gym floors are done correct oh yeah i forgot about that oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was been that was that happened uh, the next week after school got out i forgot all about that yeah the gym floors are done so so that's good and i i think and i've got that i've got that set with the company to do it in the same schedule every year for the next five years okay so um and just so we can get it over with and then every about planning around that that's going to take place on you know in the middle of july when they want to have a tournament or they want to do this or the other so everybody's been able to use the gym whenever they want now so i think it worked out pretty well and uh, i know that that, um, uh, that dan stewart was was happy that it worked out that way too you know and all the coaches so it's good yeah no so it's been a busy uh Busy uh, month up here at Litchfield High School in the middle school, but uh, it's all coming together. Um, crews are getting things put back yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, and uh, all the custodians, all the schools, everything is, everything's flowing. You know, Russell is Russell's pretty pretty much done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll be pulling those two custodians out to yeah. help out some other custodians in places. You know, of course, of course, we're going to have the the big move here soon, so we're trying to work on that too. So. Uh, no, but yeah, we'll we'll be pulling them there. The high school usually usually needs the most help towards towards the end of the year. They there's so much to do, but uh, they'll they'll come in here and, and, and help out along those lines. So middle school, like um, like Mr. Payton said, is uh, is they've already finished the upstairs, and they were probably half finished with the downstairs before they went on vacation. And so they've got another week's worth of vacation. We'll be back and they'll. They'll knock that out in no time. So yeah, it's all looking good. Thank you. Yeah. Did you notice the guitars on the wall that are? Mm -hmm. That's oh, that's, that's, that's Mike Pilger's like this is gonna become the you know the music room or whatever. So and and Mr. Henley asked for if he could place the guitars, you know, and get them hung on a wall in something that looked good. And that's what Mike came up with. Uh, he had whatever however many guitars it is I forget you know and we I came in one day and he was like well what do you think about this you think this will work I said I think that's gonna look good so mm -hmm. that's that's all Mike Kilger's work and he did a good job at it and, and Mr. Henley loves it so uh, he, he just thought it was cool so anyway well, I don't know if I got anything else. No, I could probably keep talking all night long. No, it's good. No, there's been a lot of work, a lot of work done and, uh, with maintenance and 
the guys are keeping up with the phone. Yeah, she would have she would have talked to. So you know, other than that, the only thing I don't I really don't have anything on the report. We've talked about a lot of it tonight. We did have one FOIA request to smart procurement and that comes every so many months. So Dell has got a little sheet already made up for it. And when they send that, I just send it to Dell and Dell takes care of it for me and it's done.